want you to find the area of this angle. So someone give me an idea about how we can go about doing this. Okay, and then? Right. Okay, good. So then just sort of, you know, as a flow chart kind of idea, right? So it'll be something like this. Your formula should look like the area of the big circle. circle minus the area of the uh, little circle. So then, <coughs> if you have a circle, the area of the circle of radius r is what? Because the area of the circle is the big circle. Pi r squared. Okay. So that being the case, what is the what is the radius of the big circle? Five plus x. Right? The area of the big circle is five plus x. Uh, excuse me, not the area, I mean the radius. <coughs> so the radius of the big circle. circle <coughs> minus the area of the little circle. Okay, so let's simplify this as much as we are able. Okay, so this would be pi multiplied by, now we can do x plus 5 squared, so you should be able to do x plus 5 squared pretty rapidly with x plus 5 squared. x squared plus 10x Question about this example? <coughs> Any question about this example? Okay. <coughs> so we've been multiplying and adding and subtracting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do something in the opposite order, in the opposite direction, I should say. So, you know, a sort of really uh, easy example of what we what we did last time. this, and then you could use FOIL or whatever, and blah, blah, and then you could come to this. x squared plus 8x plus 15. And then do FOIL. Okay, so this direction, we've been going in this direction. And we've been calling this multiplying. Okay, now we're going to go in the opposite So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an expression that's going to be, you know, simplified in a sense, multiplied out, and 
then from it, I want you to release its factors. Okay, good. So let's start out with a simple example. So how about how about uh, this would be as simple as a function five x plus ten. This can be factored a little bit. So what is common to five x and ten? A factor of five. Factor out of five and say that this is five multiplied by something. Five multiplied by what? X plus two. Oops. X plus two. Okay. So normally in the previous questions we were going, you know, from the factored form to the multiplied out form, but now we're going in the opposite direction. So I understand this question is a little easier. Okay. But does everyone understand the procedure? So then, how about <coughs> how about something? this uh, as much as possible. <coughs> you don't have to do it all at once, but I'm going to do it kind of one, one category at a time. So I see constants, right? I see constant terms, 12 and 60. I see x's, and I see y's. So 12 and 60. What, do, what is the biggest thing that can factor out of 12 and also 60? 12, right? 12 is a factor of something. So 12 is a factor of 12, and 12 is a factor of 60. So then you can say that this is 12 multiplied by x squared y cubed plus 5 multiplied by x squared y. Okay, now can I factor out any more constants? <coughs> no, there's no more constants that can factor, <coughs> that can factor out. How about x's now? So how many x's are common to each of the terms in the function? x squared. So an x squared can be factored out. So now in the next step, we can say, all right. All right, so I can say 12x squared multiplied by what goes in the terms? y cubed plus 5x y. Okay, good. So is there any question on how we got to this Inside of the parentheses, is there anything else that is common? A factor of y, good. So then 12x squared y, and then what do I write in the parentheses? y squared plus 5. There you go. Okay, so now this is factored. Okay, so any question about this example? too far into it, I want you to tell me, what is the antonym of factoring? Multiplying out. So if you are currently multiplying out, you are doing the exact opposite of what's correct. <laughs> Some of you look at the paper like, oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, so, so, <coughs> what I want you to see is this. Right? Here's this thing in a box. And here's this other thing in a box. So now, don't call it y minus 4, just call it box. Is there a common term? Yes, box is common to both of them. So box can be factored out. Box can be factored out. So then, <coughs> you can say that this is 3x plus 2 multiplied by box. Okay with it. So 
I realize that I'm not trying to be tricky with you here. I'm trying to show you that there's a little bit to be gleaned from this case you thought that this was a, a tricky example. So let's do another one. Now that you've seen the trick, you should, you should be okay with it. Okay, so then how about x plus 7 squared plus x plus 7? Switch back to this case. what is common? There's an x plus 7, which is common. So I'll factor it out on the left. x plus 7. Okay, and then multiply it by. So if I factor out an x plus 7 from here, from this x plus 7 squared, what would be? An x plus 7. Okay, and if I factor x plus 7 out of this x plus 7, what would be? A 1. Okay, so then now we can simplify this. plus 7 multiplied by 1x plus 7. Like that. <coughs> so any questions about this one so far? Any questions? <coughs> okay. So any questions about anything before we get <coughs> a little further? Okay, so now, now we're going to work on something different. This is going to be called factoring binomials. Okay, so then now, we need to have just a little bit of jargon. We need to be able to say something. So we have this word, this section that we're in is called polynomial, which means many named. Okay, so then a monomial. What does monomial mean? One name. Right, one name. One term. So an example of a monomial. An example of a monomial is uh, x squared. Right? It just has one term. Another example would be, uh, I don't know, 10x. It just has one term in it. Another example would be one term in it. These are monomials. Okay, so then how about uh, continuing in this? What is a binomial? Two names. So what's an example of a binomial? Sorry? Not xy. X plus y. X plus y. <coughs> There's an x and a plus and a plus y. So how about also, I don't know, uh, 5 plus x, that's a binomial. Okay, x squared plus 1, that's a binomial. <coughs> okay, and then a trinomial. The specific kind of trinomial that we're going to deal with is something like this. x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay, we're going to work on factoring these exact things. Okay, so the only reason why I'm writing any of this down is because I, want, I don't want you to be confused by the, <coughs> if I use these words on accident. Sometimes I get, I try not to use them too much, but if I just say trinomial, I don't want you to think talking about something special or weird or magical. It's just something like this. Okay. <coughs> so, now, we're in uh, the case of factoring trinomials. Okay, so we'll focus just a minute on 
with this part. So then here, with the, the simplest kind of So let's, let's multiply this out. If we were to multiply these out and stuff like this, it would leave me with x squared plus ax plus bx plus a squared. That's what we would get. And then x plus a x plus b. And back to the original question, x squared. So what we need to do, what we need to do is it's easy, right? I just did it in front of your eyes to go in this direction, right? To just multiply. What we're going to do is we're going to move the fractions portion and I'm going to move the natural direction portion of the fraction portion. And the, what it's going to be controlled by at first are these two things. So the, the rightmost number is a product, and the, the middle number is a sum. So what we're going to need to do is I'm going to, it's essentially going to be a game where you're given a bunch of numbers, you need to find, you're going to need to factor one number, and then see if those factors sum into the other, to be the other number. And so then I can make that <coughs> strange statement clear with an example. So how about x squared? So then, <coughs> we need to factor 3. So what is the factorization of 3? 1 and 3, right? Very nice that it's only 1 and 3. 1 and 3. So there are two factors. Okay, do those factors add up to, to the middle number? Yes, they do. Oh, so that's magical. Right? So there's this. So these two pieces together tell you that this trinomial that I gave you factors into x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 2. Okay, so you might think, ah, uh, that sounds a little bit of, sounds a little bit magical. How can I verify that that in fact is correct? Multiply it back out, right? So then just since this is the first example, let's go ahead and check. So I guess it works. <coughs> so any question about this example? Any question about this example? <coughs> okay, so now let's do a slightly more interesting one. Okay, I suppose we have one. Yeah, here we go. <coughs> do this for example. X squared plus factor negative 20. So how do we do it? So there could be, you know, 
we'll forget the plus or minus for a moment and just think about the factors of positive 20. Well, there's 1 in 20. 1 times 20. There is 2 times 10. What else? 4 times 5. Good. And what else? That's it, right? <coughs> That's it because all the rest of them are, you know, the next one would be 5 times 4 and then 10 times 2 and then 10 times 20. Nope, there's just 2 20. So now what we need to do is consider, okay, is there some way that I can combine these so that I get 1? So that I get 1. Oh, I, I still need to put the minus on the table. So then, uh, how about 20 minus 1? What would that be? 19. Is that what we need? No, that, so that's probably not it. So how about, uh, how about 10 minus 2? What is that? 8. No, that's not what we need. By what by by what we need? What is it that we need, by the way? One, right? We need one. And why do we need one? Because there's a one right there. There's an indivisible one. So how about five minus four? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's what we need. So then now I'm going to make a mistake. So I'll say x plus four multiplied by x minus five. <coughs> okay. So, you know, maybe didn't understand, you know, exactly what to do. This is close. Is this correct? No, it's not correct. How can I check and see that it's not correct? Multiply it back out. So let's check real quick. So then if you were to multiply this out, you know, this is a check. If you were to multiply this out, you would get x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. You're feeling good about the minus 20. That feels good. Uh, but then, if you collect, then you get x squared minus x minus 20. Ah, but that's not right. So then what was not right about this? Ah, it should be minus 4x and then plus 5. Right? Uh, minus 4 and then plus 5. Okay. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> any question about it? Okay. <coughs> now, we need to do one that's, that's uh, more interesting. Okay, so for example, where's my pen here? For example, 3y cubed mm, minus 6y squared minus 105y. Okay, I want you to factor this completely. So my, my question, my first question to you is this, is this a trinomial? Yeah, it's a trinomial, right? Three different names. So, as for the constants, the coefficients in front, w is there anything I can factor out of all of them? Three, right? Three can be factored out of all of them. So, uh, and by the way, how can you tell that 105 has a divisor of three? One plus zero plus five is six. Is six divisible by three? Yes. So 105 is divisible by three. Okay. <coughs> so, y cubed minus 2y minus, now the question is, is what is 105 divided by 3? 35, good. Uh, this should be y squared, good. Okay, now is there anything else I can factor out? A y can be factored out. So this would be 3y multiplied by y squared minus 2y minus 35. And then now, oh, I see, I see the joke now, right? Because inside of the round parentheses, now we have that 
that kind of thing that we're learning how to factor, right, that kind of expression we're learning how to factor, you need two things, two integers, with whose product is 35 and whose sum or difference or whatever is negative 2. So what do you think? 5 and 7, right? 35 is 5 multiplied by 7. 35 is 5 multiplied by 7. Because it is negative 35, one of the f either the 5 or the 7 has to be negative. So we just kind of have to figure out which one sh it should be. So which one should be negative, the 5 or the 7? The 7. Very good. So 3y and then y plus 5 multiplied by y minus 7. So any question about <coughs> this? Any question about it? Okay. <coughs> so any question about any of this uh, factoring business? We'll do a couple more. Um, but any questions before we go to something else completely? Because we're about to. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of mix it up. <coughs> so for example, how about, and this is reaching back a little bit, how about can you factor x squared minus 9? Should be able to. <coughs> because, right, this is x squared minus 3 squared. You should remember something that looks like that from about 25, 30 minutes ago. The only problem is, is we were going, we were going, uh, you know, left to right at that time. Now you need to be going right to left. So what does it factor into? X minus three multiplied by X plus three. Let's try another one now that the joke is out. So how about how about <coughs> uh, x squared? Uh, I don't know minus twenty five. We can't be too creative with these. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, good. X plus five multiplied by x minus five. I have a question. Right, in these two examples, I sort of wrote these in the opposite order, right? Th I did the minus and then the plus here, and then in this one I did the plus and then the minus. Have I made a mistake? No. No, it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? I'm looking for a word, a C word. Commutative, right? It doesn't matter because, because multiplication commutes. Good. Okay, so then how about something like this? How about 36 minus x squared? Make sure everyone gets a chance to do it. So what will it be? <coughs> 6 minus x and 6 plus x. Very good. Okay. <coughs> how about, uh, how about, please factor x squared plus, uh, let me think about this, x squared plus 10x plus Since I sort of need to, you know, I need to factor 25. So 25 factors into 1 times 25, or what? 5 times 5. Okay, is there some way I can use 1 and 25 or 5 and 5 to get 10? 
Uh, 5 times 5, right? So then this is x plus 5 multiplied by what? x plus 5. And then maybe, you know, you might rewrite this in a, in a slightly more compact way as what? x plus 5 squared. Good. Any question about this? Okay, <coughs> one more, and then we can move on to something else. So I'm going to draw a nice picture for you, or at least I will attempt to do so. <coughs> okay, so I'm drawing a box. Then on this side it is x, on this side it is x plus 2, and on this side it is 4. Okay, there are two parts to this question. One, I want you to find an expression for the volume of the box and, and multiply it out and collect like terms and all of that. This is a three-dimensional box, <laughs> okay. even if my drawing maybe doesn't, doesn't reflect that. <coughs> okay, so then what is the formula for a box generally? Formula for the volume of a box? Base times width times height. Okay, so then it will be x multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by uh, 4. Is everybody okay with this? Okay. So then this would be uh, what? x squared plus 2x multiplied by 4. So I distributed the x in, and so now I'll distribute the 4 in and get 4x squared plus 8x. Okay. Okay, next I want you to find uh, the, the surface area. So that means the area, the total area of the box. So you got to think about it for a little bit. How many faces does a box have? Six, right? That's like a die, like the, the gambling device, right? The, the chance device. You throw it, how many numbers are on a die? There's six. Right? Top, bottom, left, right, front, back. So your answer to this question should have the appearance that it is the sum of six things. It's the sum of six things. <coughs> okay. So I will count the front and back faces first. So what is the, the, the face that is facing us, right, the side facing us, what is its area? x times x plus 2, right? And then there's one of those in the back. So there's two of them, so I'll put a 2 here, right? There's two of those. Okay. <coughs> then plus, now I'll do the side that's facing to the right. So, right, so then I'm going to put an x here just so I can see it, right? It'll be x times 4, okay, so then 4x, so plus 4x, that's the side facing right, and then the side facing left, right, we'll count it as well, so there's two of those, so that's 2 multiplied by 4, <coughs> okay, and then plus, so now this, the side that is facing up, <coughs> the side facing up has what side? X plus 2 times 4. Good. And then there's two of those. Right? So then you can see my answer looks like the sum of six things, right? Two, the, the top and bottom, the left and right, the 
whatever. Which one did I miss? The front and the back. Okay, but I didn't say them in the right order. But I have all six of them there. Good. So then now let's multiply this out. So then mm, 2x multiplied by x will be 2x squared plus 4x and then plus 8x and then plus <coughs> 2 times 4 is 8 times x is 8x plus 16. Okay, so now let's collect uh, like terms. So then 2x squared plus how much x? 20, right? Because there's 8 and 8 is 16 plus 4 is 20. And then plus 16. Great. So any question about this? <coughs> Okay, so then these kinds of things, just you know, so you know, like my preferences, it's good to know the preferences of your instructor. I like questions like these geometry ones where it's like I give you a picture and you've got to do something with it, like find the area after you cut something out, that kind of thing. I find these questions to be the most relevant, pertinent in a section like this because, you know, a lot. I, I don't like a question. I have to give them, you know, occasionally. I don't like a question that looks like this sort of boring, right? What is all this writing? What does this have to do with anything? Okay, I do like the questions that have pictures like somewhere, like, oh, that's a good one, right? Look at that picture. <coughs> okay, good. So any questions before we move on to something else? Okay, now we're in section 1.4, which is called Rational Expressions. rational expression. <coughs> what would that mean? What does rational expression mean? Does that mean if you go to a class in philosophy, you're going to hear a lot of these? Rational expression? <laughs> oh, come on. we got to laugh a little bit. This is math class and it's three hours long. Okay. <coughs> no. Rational expression here means ratio. Right? But the ratio of what? <coughs> ratio of what? That's what's important. Okay, so a rational expression is a ratio of polynomials. Poly, just polys. Okay, so a rational expression is a ratio of two polynomials. So you can understand why section 1.4 comes after section 1.3, right? Section 1.3 was polynomials, <laughs> and section 1.4 is ratios of polynomials. Okay, so you can kind of see the reasoning behind it. <coughs> Excellent. Okay, so let's see some examples. So for example, x plus 1 over x plus 4. The numerator, x plus 1, that's a polynomial. Incidentally, what's the degree of the numerator? 1, it has degree 1. What's the degree of the denominator? 1. Okay, so this is a rational expression. Okay, so any, any, uh, any question about this expression or why it's a rational expression? Okay. Here's another rational expression. How about uh, 1 over x squared plus 1? That's a rational expression. <coughs> That's rational. So then, what is the degree of the denominator? 2. The denominator has degree 2. What is the degree of the numerator? 0. The degree of the numerator is 0. Okay, so any question about this? <coughs> okay, maybe uh, <coughs> one other example. Maybe something like this x plus y divided by x minus y. Okay, rational. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so now what th this section is about is essentially repeated use of uh, the following uh, fact about fractions. So this is like the fundamental 
idea here. And that is that <coughs> A multiplied by K over B multiplied by K is equal to A over B when B isn't 0 and K isn't 0. Okay, so we're just going to repeatedly use this fact. We're going to use this fact over and over and over again. <coughs> okay, so for example, <coughs> for example, x squared minus y squared in the numerator and x minus y all squared in the denominator. And the instruction is, the instruction in this question is to simplify. Okay. So, <coughs> so. What we're going to do is we're going to factor the numerator. So can the numerator be factored? Probably, because I said that's what we're going to do, right? So then, how can it be factored? Yes, it, it can be factored into x plus y multiplied by x minus y. Right? That's one of the, in fact, we did x squared minus y squared. No, in fact, what we did is we did the right, we did this thing and we said it equals the, the other thing mm, 35 minutes ago now. Okay, so then the denominator, <coughs> the denominator can be written like so x minus y over x minus y, uh, multiplied by x minus y. Okay, so any question on how we got to this position in the problem? Okay, now, <coughs> this movement in the previous remark from here to here, going in this direction, this is called a cancellation. Is there any cancellation possible in the current example? Yes, there is cancellation possible in the current example. What can be canceled? Yes, this, right, this can be canceled. Okay, so that all together after that, it is x plus y divided by x minus y. <coughs> So let's do a more interesting example now, now that you get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to give you an expression, and again, the, the task will be to simplify as much as possible. In the numerator, <coughs> 5, and then in parentheses, x squared plus 2, and then that parentheses squared, minus 5x, and then in parentheses, x squared plus 2. <coughs> and then over here, multiplied by uh, 2x. And then all of this is going to be divided by something fantastic, I'm sure. x squared plus 2 all to the fourth. Okay, so the task is to simplify this as much as possible. x squared plus 2. Yeah, we need to do something with that. <coughs> so, in the previous example, what did we start out by doing in the previous example? We started out by doing what in the numerator? By factoring. So, it's reasonable, reasonable to think that let's do that. Let's try factoring. Is there a common factor in the numerator? Yes, right? x squared plus 2 is common. x squared plus 2 is common. So I'll factor it out uh, on the left, I guess. So x squared plus 2 is common, so I can factor it out. Okay, then I'll get something in here, like so. Okay, 
so then now, if I factor x squared plus 2 out, then what do I, what is the first term I get here? I get a 5 and x squared plus 2. So is there any question why that's what, what remains here? Any question? Okay, and then minus how much? 5x and times 2x. Okay, is there any question why that's what remains here? So maybe I can save myself some extra energy. Okay, so any question on how we got to here? Because this is like the fundamental thing. Okay, so now I will <coughs> continue. So x squared plus 2, and then, <coughs> oh, I guess I could have factored out a 5, couldn't I? Could have done it, should have done it. <coughs> oh, well. So let's do it now. Okay, so then times 5 multiplied by x squared plus 2, and then minus x times 2x. Okay, so then now, I heard someone say something that I liked, something about x squared plus 2. What, what can we do at x squared with x squared plus 2 at this position? Uh, we can cancel one, right? We can cancel one. So then, if you can see how to cancel it, that's fine, but I'm going to, I'm going to make it very clear, uh, as clear as I can, since this is the, exam the, the lecture and I have time to do it here. So then, now, I'll do that. <coughs> worry about the that. The machine is always giving me issues. Okay, so then <coughs> this, so then now I'll, I'll factor x squared plus 2 to the 4 like this. I'll put an x squared plus 2 there and then an x squared plus 2 cubed and then I'll simplify the thing in the Square parentheses and get what? Negative x squared plus 2, like that. Okay, so now you should see this is the thing that in this example what we're going for. You should see that these two things cancel. They cancel. <coughs> <coughs> so that you will get 5 multiplied by negative x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 2 cubed. What? It could be. Where did I make a mistake? Okay, what? Okay, I can't see. I, I believe that I made a mistake, but I just can't see where it is. Where is it? The second step. This one? This one? You're talking about from here to here? So where are we talking about? So from here to here? Oh, well, so this would be x squared and then minus 2x squared. So 1x squared minus 2x squared is negative 1x squared. I believe that's, I believe that's okay. And then this is, and this is plus 2 and plus 2. <coughs> Other questions? Okay, so any questions about this example? Wonderful. <coughs> so let's continue. Yes? Did you get the same answer? Okay, so then what did you get? Okay, well, I can't really follow you in the in the air, so. Um, but uh, I'll be happy to look at it after class, unless you want me to look at it right now. You want to do it after? I don't mind looking at it right now. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we'll do it afterward. Okay. So now, 
let's uh, do some more operations with rational expressions. <coughs> so an example <coughs> is this. <coughs> Excuse me. Is this. So for example, how about I give you something like this. x plus 3 over mm, x plus 1 multiplied by mm, x plus 2 over x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 1 over, uh, how about, we'll be tricky here, 2x plus 6. Okay, now, these are all multiplied together. Yeah. Multiply, multiply. Okay, and the point is, is that we want to simplify these expressions <coughs> as much as possible. Okay. So, I gave one piece of low-hanging fruit you should be able to see that something will cancel quite immediately. What? The x plus 1, right? If you were to multiply this all out in a numerator, right, you could see that, well, this x plus 1 is in the numerator, and this x plus 1 is in the denominator, so these, these will cancel. Okay? So then I'll sort of make that clear like this. I'll say that I can reorder the numerator and say that this is x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 by reordering the numerator. And then the denominator, x plus 1, x plus 5, 2x plus 6. Okay, so then these terms cancel. Okay, so then after that cancellation, we have x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 over x plus 5 multiplied by 2x plus 6. Okay, so is everybody clear on how we got to this position? Now, I claim to you that further factorization was possible, further cancellation is possible. It's a little bit hidden, just slightly. It's just slightly hidden because <coughs> excuse me. The <coughs> excuse me. The denominator is not fully factored. In what way is the denominator not fully factored? You can factor out a two out of the term that is on the right. So then, the term that's on the right uh, can be factored further. So then, this is x plus three multiplied by x plus two in the numerator, and in the denominator x plus 5 multiplied by 2 multiplied by x plus 3. And now that it is f fully factored, you should be able to see, oh, 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 what else will cancel? The x plus 3 will cancel now. Okay, so then x plus 2 uh, in the numerator multiplied by x plus 5 multiplied by 2. This is as simple as it gets. Okay, so any question about this answer? Okay, let's try another whoop, another one. So how about how about uh, something like this? X minus three over x plus two multiplied by uh, x plus five over three minus x.
What do you think? Will there be any cancellation? Is any cancellation possible? I claim yes. I claim yes. Okay, the reason why I claim yes is because, let's consider, there are like four terms, right? Oops. There are four terms here. Right? There's the x minus 3, x plus 5, x plus 2, and 3 minus x. And I claim that one of them is the odd man out. Right? One of them is not represented in the same way that the other three are. The other three are written how? In, in what form? In, in standard form. Right? In standard form. In particular, they all have a, a leading coefficient which is positive. Right? So notice, notice that I can do the following. I can say, okay, well, this is, this is in the numerator, x minus 3 multiplied by uh, x plus 5. And in the denominator, this will be this will be x plus 2 multiplied by 3 minus x. But now this term 3 minus x in the denominator, I can say that, well, that's x minus 3, x plus 5, and then x plus 2. And now what if I factor out negative 1? Then what does this term become? x minus 3. So now just think of it. Now it's it's kind of difficult to think of it going in the direction I just went. But now look at it and see if you can go right to left. What if you multiply that negative one into x minus three? What do you get? Negative x plus three, which is three minus x. Okay. So now that it's written down on the paper, can you see that there will be some cancellation? Yes. Okay. So the cancellation uh, will be the x minus three. Okay. So then after that cancellation, you'll get x plus 5 in the numerator, and uh, x plus 2 multiplied by negative 1 in the denominator. Okay, any question about this? Okay, so how about, how about, um, uh, yeah, <coughs> just something simple, so like x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And then how about divided by x plus uh, 7 over x squared plus 1. <coughs> that symbol divided by. So in order to proceed, in order to proceed, really, we need to recall that division by a fraction is the same as what? Multiplication by reciprocal. Okay. So then, x plus one over x squared plus one, and then this will be multiplied by multiplied by x squared plus one over x plus seven. So instead of dividing by that fraction, I'll multiply by its reciprocal. And now I can say that, well, that'll be x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus 1 and then uh, divided by x squared plus 1 multiplied by x plus 7. Can you see any cancellation? Yes? You can you can leave it separate if you like. <coughs> when when I'm teaching, I like to show as many steps and write it as clearly as possible. <coughs> so x plus one divided by x plus seven. Is there any question about this? The main thing you want to do when you're uh, submitting your uh, answers to me in the grader is the following. This is what you want to keep in mind, and that it, and that is this. We are grading your work. Okay, it's not your answer that's being graded. It's not like the last thing that you wrote. It's not the thing that you circled. I mean, that that has a little bit of 
meaning, but not much. Right? What we're looking for is that you're able to carry out an argument like I have written here, like, like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see division is the same, division by fraction is the same as multiplication by reciprocal, and blah blah. So we're looking to see you carry out an argument. Right? Math is a language just like English is a language. Right? So we're looking for you to compose math sentences. Okay, that's what's being graded. So I know, I know, because I'm a human, I know that human beings endeavor to do as little work as possible. Right? I'm, I'm a human, just like everyone. Okay, but that strategy will not uh, serve you in this class. Okay, I want to see you write these things because that's what's being graded. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so let's continue. So, for example, how about how about mm, x over mm, x over y plus five over x? I want you to write this as a single rational expression. If these were just like fractions, like one fourth plus five thirds or whatever, then what would you do? Find a common denominator or cross multiply or, or whatever. So then that's what I'm going to do. Right? <coughs> I'll say that what is the common denominator of these? X, Y, right? So then I'll you can either do that or a cross multiply. In the numerator, you get X squared plus 5Y over xy and I did that by cross multiplying right x squared 5y x y okay so any question about this one okay one more okay so x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus mm, 5 over x uh, plus 7. I want you to write this as a single rational expression. So again, it's this cross-multiply business. Except now it's slightly more interesting because the terms are a little more complicated. Okay. So then it will be x plus 1 times x plus 7 plus x minus 2 times 5 over <coughs> x plus 2 uh, minus 2 times x plus 7. Okay, so now let's multiply out the numerator and collect like terms. So then we'll get what? x squared plus 8x plus 7 plus 5x minus 10 x minus 2 x plus 7 okay, so we'll collect like terms in the numerator now so x squared and then plus how much x 
13x and then minus 3 over x minus 2 times x plus 7. Okay, and that's a good enough place to stop there. Okay, so any questions about this? Okay, we'll do one more, and then that will be the end <coughs> of this week's lecture. Okay, so any questions before we get to it? Okay. So, <coughs> this kind of expression is a very uh, common kind of expression. For those of you that are going to go on and take calculus eventually, you'll have to deal with expressions that look like this all of the time. This is called, not that it matters really for this class right at this moment, but for those of you that just have an interest, this is called a difference quotient. Okay, so the instruction is I want you to write this as a single rational expression in the simplest terms. What next? <coughs> Sorry? Yeah, we can perform some cancellation that's in the numerator in the numerator. So first off, I'm going to say that division by this h is the same as multiplication by 1 over h, just so it's a little simpler to look, look at so we don't have fractions within fractions and things like that. So it'll be 3x minus 3x plus h over x plus h, x, and multiplied by 1 over h, just to sort of help myself with bookkeeping there. So then <coughs> in the numerator, 3x minus 3x plus 3h. I'm waiting. I have something written here, and I'm waiting for someone to comment about what I have written. Cancel what out? Oh, oh okay, okay. So let there's two comments. <laughs> okay, so first off, first off, this should be minus. <laughs> okay, that's the comment I was fishing for, <laughs> is that this should be minus. And then another one came up that I need to address right now. Okay, so this step that I've written here is correct. But the other one that came up just now was this, <coughs> was why didn't I cancel the x plus h? Okay, so someone explain to me why I didn't. Because you cannot cancel it. Okay, 
you cannot cancel it. So, <coughs> so what the, the rule that we've been using, the rule that we've been using is that a over uh, a times k over b times k is a over b when a and b are when b and k are not zero. Right? That's the rule that we're using. So now, if I was to cancel the x plus h in the position that it's in, it would be saying the following. It would be a plus bk over ck. Right, you, can't, you can't cancel the k here, because k is not a factor of all of the numerator. It's a k of just one of the factors in the numerator. Right, there is no x plus h multiplying this 3x. So the cancellation there cannot occur not occur. So is everybody clear on that that bit? Okay, good. But that's a frequent a frequent error. Okay, so then <coughs> now in the numerator, 3x minus 3x, so they cancel. So then in the numerator, 3h over x plus h multiplied by x multiplied by 1 over h. Okay, is there any other cancellation you can observe? Ah, now the h's can cancel, right? This h can cancel with that h. So maybe I'll make it do it in two steps. So it'll be 3h over x plus h x h. And now you can see that the h's will cancel. So then it will be negative 3 over x plus h x. So this computation here, this is called computing a difference quotient. It is a very, <coughs> very frequent in calculus, uh, it's used a lot. The, the result of a difference quotient is used a lot in every science, like chemistry and physics and things like that. But they usually don't compute actual di difference quotients in those classes. They just quote the results in calculus. Okay, very good. So then, watch for messages this afternoon to tell you about where to find the homework, etc. And have a good weekend. <coughs>